For the next many days and nights, Comet A3 is going to be at the top of everyone's minds. Everyone's going to want to take a picture of it. And Comet Academy is particularly well positioned to give people the information that they need. I'm going to, in this video, highlight a few items like where and when to take advantage of this very brief opportunity to capture Comet A3, as well as some tips on processing it. As far as the information about where and when, on my website I've just made public some of the content of Comet Academy. So Comet Academy has all of this information, but if you scroll down, there is a particular planning video that deals specifically with this comet. Now I made this video back in February, so it contains information that started then and is actually now finally coming to fruition up to today. In the video I demonstrate how to make cool orbit diagrams like this using the JPL Horizons tools, and then I give a description of what you would expect to see in the sky with regards to the comet, especially as it goes around the sun. So I would encourage you, now that it's available, please watch this video. and You can also see the planning guide, which highlights a few really neat opportunities as far as uh, when it would be a good idea to take a picture of it. A few days ago, NASA's Astronomy Picture of the Day published a beautiful image of A3. It was an image that was created by Brian Valenti, a member of my site. He used and leveraged Comet Academy in order to help him produce this very image, which became his first astronomy picture of the day. And I think this lends credence to the idea that you can use a master class like Comet Academy. Anyone can produce these kinds of images once you know this very technical way to work with Comet data. And that's what Comet Academy is all about. So congratulations, Brian. That is a really fantastic picture. Now, coming back to PixInsight, what I'd like to talk about is comet alignment, specifically this process. It's, I believe, one of a kind as far as other software programs are concerned. It is dedicated to you know, processing comets and doing the very best you possibly can, mostly because this has two very good powers. One is that there are several different ways of aligning comets using this tool. And number two, you can also subtract uh, like master light comets, starless comets, from your star field data. And that allows you to create stars only and object only images. And uh, then of course you're going to blend all of that together. Now all of this is explained step by step, rigorously, with the various combinations, whether it's mono cameras or one-shot color cameras and all of that in Comet Academy. What I want to make very clear and public is one particular way in which comet alignment works, because everyone's going to be using it if you're using PixInsight. And it deals with this particular part of the alignment. It says compute the point spread function fits, PSF fits. So let me go ahead and show you some data of the motion of this particular comet. This uh, data was given to me by Mr. Bartlett, who creates amazing comet uh, processing or, you know, cometary images. And uh, he let me show this as a one-shot color camera example. So if we blink through these frames, you can see the motion of the comet against the background stars. Now, before I let this image go by, I'm going to mention another very important thing, and it's the kind of detail that I explain in my courses. It is possible that when you choose to align the images, if you don't want to double interpolate, that is double align the comet, if you have the right kind of data, and that data would be non-dithered, and you wouldn't want to have a meridian flip in there, you can take advantage of aligning on the calibrated only comet data instead of aligning on the stars first. There's a little tip for you, and that way you can get perhaps a better image. However, it does come with the fact that you need to pay more attention or else you can run into some issues with alignment. Now, the other way to go is the way that I'm just demonstrating here, where I'm showing data that has already been aligned on the stars. So effectively, I am going to be doing like a double alignment here. But in this case, it's perfectly fine. What I'd like to demonstrate is the other, perhaps more important effect. I want to minimize people's frustration. And I think by demonstrating this, I'll be able to do that. So now you've seen what the data looks like. Let me just go ahead and load it here into Comet Alignment. I'm just going to open all of those files like this, and we will seek to align them. The way that it works in Comet Alignment is you're going to click on perhaps the first frame. These are now ordered in time. 
And within this field is the comet. Even if I don't stretch it, I can probably zoom in and find the comet. I'll go ahead and stretch the image for you so you can see that here is the comet. But as far as uh, being able to see the centroiding of things, it's actually best not to show that. You can see there's a tiny little bit of streaking here. And what I want to demonstrate first is if I click on the nucleus, you'll see it doesn't center on the nucleus. I mean, I can see that with my eye and my brain. The, the nucleus, though it is somewhat saturated, um, is here, not there. So I can tell that with my eye. The centroiding is fooled by the fact that it's trying to figure out all these brightnesses and it's near saturation. We can fix it by hitting the control key and then clicking where we believe the best place would be as far as centroiding is concerned. So that's one. Now you know one qu quick trick as far as comet alignment is concerned. Uh, this doesn't always happen. It depends on the kind of uh, nucleus, but this is a very bright comet. A3 could very well be quite similar. Now I'm going to click on the last frame here and uh, again go find the comet if we can't see it this way will help like this and then we can turn off that zoom in here again a control click will be necessary so we go like that and then we're good and what comet alignment picks insight is going to do is it's going to calculate and it's going to compute from each image based on the time how far the comet would have shifted given linear motion. And it'll do that from frame to frame. So, for example, if I just go now look at another frame, even though we haven't clicked on anything, because it is in between the two that we did select, you'll find that it, uh, it is now marked the nucleus based on that motion, which should be linear. But there is a difference between just simply computing linear motion and this other computation of PSF fitting, PSF fitting is actually going to, you know, once it does this kind of linear motion, it'll go calculate the point spread function, the centroiding in every single image at that position to get an even more accurate result. And what that can do is it, if the, if for some reason, because you have distortion or perhaps really the comet is not moving quite in a straight line in the time that you're taking a picture of it, then this will uh, properly compute that. It will do a non-linear adjustment as far as the orbit is concerned. That's the most precise method, but there is an issue you need to pay attention to, and that's what I'm going to show you next. I do all of the details here. One thing that I am not showing is the fact that you would set a reference frame. One of these frames is going to be a reference. You might also want to uh, put a pin that is measure the position of the comet in one of these frames that you would consider a reference frame. But everything looks pretty good, so I'm going to go ahead and put an output directory here. I've called this output directory test PSF fits. That's what the method is that we're using here. And you can see we have it checked here, compute PSF fitting. I'm also going to generate the comet path mask, and you'll see why that's so interesting in a moment. Let's go ahead and do the work. It's going to align the images and write them to my computer. Okay, here we are. Let me go ahead and do two things. One. Let me show you the path. You'll notice that we have a linear path and then something happens right there. What in the world is that about? Well, if we go use the blink tool, we can blink and see exactly what happened. Okay, here we are, so I'll go ahead and blink and you'll notice everything is fine until you get to there. What's there? What's there? It's the star. That's what's there. PSF fitting means it tries to calculate the centroid in every frame and if it happens to pass by a bright enough star, the centroiding will include that star and mess up the alignment on the comet. You're welcome. This is going to save a lot of people frustration. Why? The reason why is because if you look back at comet alignment, what I'm showing you here is the default setting. And the default setting can give you some headache if you didn't realize that the nucleus was passing near some bright star and then you go to, you don't know to, you know, these things that I'm showing here, you go to blink your images or just go ahead and uh, uh, combine them all, you'll find that you don't get an optimum result. Now, what's the fix? The fix is to turn it off. If you have a, if you don't have any stars, it does great. But if you happen to have, as in this case, a star nearby, you should know that um, and, uh, you know, perhaps turn it off and just do the linear fit because the linear in the for majority of like 99% of the time is going to be just fine. 
So let me go ahead and run it. I will change nothing, nothing at all. All I'm going to do now is just run it without the computation of the PSF fitting. And there we go. Now if we zoom in, you'll see that we have a perfectly straight line because it's not actually looking at the data. It's calculating this just strictly from positions based on the first and the last points that we uh, highlighted here. If you ever have a problem though, like this, there was another way to solve this problem and I demonstrate this in Comet Academy. We could have fixed it just literally by clicking, forcing those particular images that are misaligned. You can just force the, you know, the position that you want. That'll be another way to kind of fix things by pinning it. But ultimately, linear motion is probably going to be a good answer by a default setting. If you want something more precise, then you can use the PSF fitting. Here, I'll go ahead and blink this information now, and you'll see that the star no longer has an effect because we're not even measuring the centroid. We're just computing positions based on linear motion. So I hope this will save you and many others some frustration when you use the amazing tool. Uh, Comet Alignment is an absolutely spectacular tool, but it does come with the need to understand how all of these parameters work. Parameters that I explain um, in great detail and effectiveness in Comet Academy. I hope you'll become a member of my site and for example get Comet Academy. Now is the time to do it with this bright comet in the sky so that you can learn how to uh, take advantage and leverage all of these tools that are in PixInsight and do it before <laughs> you are rushed to do so because you're going to want to know the answer quickly. Now is a good time to check it out.